Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Tiffany with Tiff and Stitches and this is knitting podcast number two. So excited to be back and I just wanted to say thank you so much for all of the support and kind words in the comments of my first knitting podcast and welcome to all of the new subscribers that are here for knitting. So it's really nice to meet you guys and I'm super excited to um, just, yeah, I don't know, make more friends in this community and uh, share my knitting with with you guys. So thank you so much for the support and the warm welcome. I really appreciate it. Um, and I don't have too, too much to show you guys. I have been um, a seamstress the last couple of weeks since you saw me last. I've been sewing some project bags for more of the cross stitch community. Um, they, I mean, I guess you could use them for knitting, but they're not really meant to hold like yarn balls and, and Hanks and all of that. Um, they're more for cross stitch, uh, but I did have a big sale and it's still going on on my Instagram right now. So if you're a cross stitcher, head over there, um, check those out. But it will be moving over to Etsy um, as of tomorrow morning. So I have been sewing, sewing and sewing and sewing all of the bags. I think I made 26 and I have like maybe 10 more to make um, that sold. So that's what I've been doing. Haven't been knitting as much, but I do have one project I've been working on. And then I thought I would show you guys some of my yarn stash that I already have plans for. Cause I thought that could be fun. I didn't really go into that in my first video. Um, and yeah, that's really it. So I will jump in. Oh, and then I have a giveaway winner. So thank you all for everyone who entered the giveaway uh, for the Wasted Yarns um, skein of DK uh, acrylic yarn in berry sangria. So I will be picking a winner for that and have that at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that if you wanted to win this um, or if you entered to win it. So the only project I have worked on, I actually had to restart, which was such a bummer because I had cast on 390 stitches, which was a very long, tedious process. Um, and I had to start it over because um, my ribbing, I, so first of all, this is the Boxy by Hohi Locatelli. I showed you guys this last time. This is where I'm at today. Um, all the way around, I think I have done 15 rows. The light is showing you through it, but there's three rows of ribbing and then stockinette for 16 more inches. So, um, I think I have about an inch, so maybe 15 more inches. Cause I think I have an inch, um, done, but that is where I am at with the boxy and the yarn I am using for that, which we'll talk about more in a second. Don't worry, I'm not just gonna blow past this, but this is the Hobby Lobby Yarn Bee in Dark Denim. Oops, there we go, Dark Denim. So um, I'll get into that in a second. But basically the reason I had to restart this is I knew my ribbing was off. I had gotten off with my Knit One Pearl one because I took my markers out too early and I just was like, you know what, it's fine. I'm not gonna recast on because my my little border looks a little funky. No big deal, I won't mind. But then I was working, I had a few rows of my stockinette done and I was working on it and there was like a gaping hole. I don't know how I accidentally did a yarn over without intentionally doing a yarn over. I have no idea how you do that. I, I'm learning a lot about knitting, but I don't even know like how that would happen. Some ladies at my knit night think that maybe I, um dropped a stitch in a or moved it over a certain way or did something but um I couldn't figure out there was no way to fix it because it was like rows back and so I just ripped it out and started over but I'm glad I did because I was very careful with my ribbing and it's all good there's no it all lines up I've got my little rib you can kind of see it there with the shadow there I've got my rib pattern all the way around, so that that's fixed now, no holes. So I'm glad I did it. Um, I am using a 40 inch cable on this and it is all bunched up on there because um, it is a lot of stitches. So it takes me a minute to get around, um, do a full round on this, probably about 20 to 30 minutes to get all the way around because I'm not a super fast knitter. I haven't gotten there yet, but um, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, and I hopefully will have a good more amount to show of this, although I do want to start some new things or work on some current whips um, and not just monogamously work on this. So we'll see what I have to show next time. But that's all I worked on. 
Um, so this sweater calls for four, um, four skeins. Uh, so this is the one I am currently working with. And then I have three more. Um, so I'm not going to go too far into this. And I hope that that can be respected by people. But I am, before I bought this yarn, I was not aware. Um, but I have been made aware of the uh, copying of indie dyers that Hobby Lobby is doing um, with this hand dyed line. Um, and I don't condone that at all. I don't think that the color that I have is like a direct copy. I could be wrong, um, but it's just blacks and blues. It's nothing that's like super original or anything like that. Um, but I do know that the, the lemonade shop, the lemonade, the, the tight, like kind of the solids with the pops of rainbow, um, that that is what's being said is a blatant copy. And I can definitely, I've seen the pictures. It definitely looks like it to me. So I don't condone that. Um, I don't, I don't plan on purchasing that style from them. Um, if I did want to, I would purchase it from the Indie Dyer. But what I will say is that the motivation for me purchasing this yarn, um, because I, I'm about to show you a, a whole gob of hand dyed Indie yarn that cost me $30 a skein. So I definitely support Indie Dyers. But the reason was because this was my first sweater and investing $150 into something that I'm not sure is going to be something I enjoy or that I'm gonna be capable of because I've never done sleeves, I've never picked up stitches, I've never knit 16 inches of stockinette. Like, I don't know if it's gonna be something that keeps my attention or it doesn't. So investing that much money on the first go around just didn't make sense to me. And so I wasn't gonna knit a sweater. I was gonna just stick with shawls and hats and not even give it a try. But when I found this option of uh, you know, 420 yards of fingering weight for $14.99 plus a 30% off sale, I was more willing to take a chance at it, right? Um, and so, I, I mean, this entire sweater is going to cost me $43 um, in yarn. And that to me was, was worth me giving it a shot, right? So I am... In a sense, I think it's great that there is a affordable option and a readily available option because there are some people that cannot afford $30 a skein, even though they would love to. And there's some people that don't have access to a local yarn shop. Not that you can't order online from Indie Dyers, but you know, some people like to feel it and see it and touch it and know what it's going to look like um, whenever it's, you know, knit up or have an idea and ordering online until you get to know a dyer, it's better to see the yarn in person, right? So there's some people that don't have a local yarn shop and all they have is a Hobby Lobby um, that they can buy yarn at. So I think it's cool that those people have an option for like a hand dyed um, look to their, to their work. So that's my two cents on it. Um, not condoning what they've done at all, but I think that there's, you know, some positives too. And I, and I like to weigh both sides of the options and, you know, that's just, that's my opinion. So anyways, moving on from that. And, um, you know, if you, if you want to be mad at me, you can be mad at me, but please don't, um, spew hate at each other in the comments or anything about the debate. I don't want to debate it. I just wanted to say that I was aware and that I don't condone it and I don't plan on supporting buying any yarns that are blatant copies of Indie Dyers. Um, I just, the ones that are not blatant copies or are more generic, um, I think they're a good option when you're first starting out and trying something new. So um, that is all on that. Uh, the next thing that I want to jump in on is kind of some yarn that I have that is stashed away, but I already have projects ready to go that I'm hoping to cast on soon. Maybe before you see me next, maybe not. I don't know, but at least it's something to talk about um, and go through because I have the patterns printed out and I have the yarns. So the first thing I am really eager to start, I think I could knock it out pretty quickly, but I am missing one of the size needles that I need. Um, there are two size needles that it calls for, which is US 9s um, with a 16 inch circular and a 10.5s. And I think I have the 9s, but not the 10.5s with the 16 inch. 
So I just need to pick those up before I can start this. But this is the Sidewinder Beanie by Aspen Leaf Knits. I really like it. And then the yarn I'm using for this, I did show you guys last time. And this is the Malabrigo Mecca in Arape. Arape. So um, I'm excited to see how this knits up. I think it's going to look really pretty. I just need to get those needles. And that will probably be cast on before you see me next because I already tried to cast it on, but I didn't realize I was using 24 inch circular and that didn't work. So I had to take it out. Um, but that's my Malabrigo that you've already seen. And now the next um, few bits of yarn you haven't seen before. So I'm excited to share with you. Um, I will show you this um, set first. I already have a shawl picked out for this. I am so excited. So um, a couple, maybe like a month or so ago, it was Support Your Local Yarn Shop Day. And the yarn shop that I shop at is Yarn Store Boutique in Spring, Texas. And they were having a trunk show that day for Savvy Skeins. And I follow her on Instagram and she announced a colorway she was bringing to the trunk show. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have it. It's so pretty. So I got it. And then if you spent over $50, you got a free pattern on Ravelry. That was kind of the promo of the day. So I definitely spent more than $50. So I got myself the pattern that I wanted to use to knit this. So the color that I had to have is called Desert Vista. Oh, it's so pretty. So little factoid about me is that purple is my favorite color. <laughs> and this purple, like this deep, like eggplant-y kind of purple is like my favorite, favorite color. Um, and I just, I really like this. It's got tones of gray. It's got a little bit of kind of like a blue cast down in here. Um, rusty. Oh, I just love it. So Desert Vista was the color that I knew I wanted. So I got there early so I could make sure that I got it. Um, and then I went back and forth with the dyer um, to what colors would go well with this contrasting colors for this shawl. So this is another color that I picked up. This is Scottish Heather. So this is going to bring out the purples in the variegation. And then the other color that I got is called Denim. But it is actually almost that exact dark gray. So these are the three I got. I am so excited to start this project. Um, and the, these are all her Sensible Sock Base which are 420 yards for 100 grams, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. Um, so that's what all of these are. And the pattern that I'm going to knit with those yarns, let me get it all separated here, is Goldfish Memory by Casapinka. So my plan is this dark gray is going to be where you see this kind of hot pink color on the pattern. And then you can see here, there's like a gray. And that is going to be the purple. And then where the light color is, is going to be my um, variegation, variegated yarn. I think it's gonna look really pretty. I'm excited um, to put it all together. If you haven't seen this shawl spread out, this is what it looks like. It's like a rectangle that kind of tapers off at the ends. It has a lot of pattern changes. So you can see here, so like here would be the dark gray mixed with the variegation. Here would be the purple. Here would be just the variegated and then some more striping down in here, some striping up in here. So I think it's gonna look really pretty. I can't wait. I think it's gonna look really good. So um, that is something that I plan on casting on as well. I could actually cast this on. I just need to wind this yarn. Um, and I, I could do it at midnight. I just haven't done it. So I need to do that. Um, so that is some indie yarn that I purchased. And then I have some yarn that is my friend's yarn. She comes to my knit night and she started dyeing yarn. And um, I won two of these skeins in a giveaway. And then she brought the third and was like, do you want to buy this to go with it? And I was like, sure. So, and she also designed a pattern that I'm going to knit with these yarns. So, um, the two that I won, so this is called Ice Cream right here. 
And this is her fingering um, 400 yards uh, for 100 grams. I think she has changed her base since then. I'm not 100% sure, but 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. And I love this colorway. It's really, really pretty with the tans and the browns and kind of that minty green that matches this. And then this is called mint. So these two I won in a giveaway. Super sweet. And then the one that I bought is chocolate chip. Yeah, chocolate chip. So these three all go together. And the, and that, I don't know if I said it, but her company is Small Batch Yarns. Her name is Elise. I'll have her um, Instagram linked below. And she designed this shawl. And so I'm going to knit this with that yarn. And it is called the Stingray Shawl. So that's what it looks like. There's another picture of it in a different colorway right there. It's really pretty. And so I will be knitting that, her shawl with her yarn. So I'm excited for that. Um, and then the last thing I have to show you, I've already wound it, it's ready to go, is my next sock, which I think I've told you all the sock saga in the last one. But I'm finishing the sock I have on the needles just for practice. Um, but this is my, my next sock that I'm actually going to, I think, love. Now, I don't know where the label is for this Savvy Skeins um, to find the color for you guys. I'll have to look and see if I can find it. I don't, if I do find it, I'll put it on the screen, but I don't know if I will. Um, this is Savvy Skeins. I got it the same day at the trunk show. It's so gorgeous. It's got these kind of fuchsias, magenta, maroon, I don't even know, with purple and like deep teal colors and then some pops of green. I think it's going to be absolutely gorgeous for a sock. And then this is um, Madeline Tosh, uh, a mini skein of antique lace. And that is going to be my toe and my heel. And maybe the cuff, I'm not 100% sure yet. I might just do this as all the way on the leg. Um, but... I love it. So that's just going to be, I don't know what sock pattern I'm going to use for this yet. Um, I haven't decided. Maybe coffee talk or I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but I think they're going to be like a really cool pairing. So those are the projects that I'm hoping to cast on soon. I'm not sure when I will, uh, but I wanted to show you guys that yarn because I had shown it in a floss tube before, but not in my last knitting podcast. So um, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And I think that's going to be all that I have today besides the giveaway winner. So um, what I'm going to do now is I will insert in a clip of me picking the giveaway winner. And um, I will end up commenting on their comment and let them know that they won so I can ship this out to them. Um, this is Wasted Yarns. I told you guys, let me just give you a little bit of a background on them. They actually did have their grand opening um, this last week and have come out now with a fingering base. Um, they This is their DK. They also had worsted, but now they are carrying fingering. And they're doing sock sets and they're doing um, some fade sets that are really cool, but it's all 100% acrylic. Um, so for anyone who's allergic to wool, who doesn't like working with wool, who for... Um, what's the right word, ethical purposes, um, is vegan and does not, chooses not to work with wool, um, this is a great option. The variegation is wonderful. Um, and yeah, I knit a shawl with it and really, really like how this knitted up. So I highly recommend if you guys haven't checked out Wasted Yarns, definitely go check them out. And I will insert the clip now of me picking a giveaway winner. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Okay guys, so I am on the YouTube random comment generator. I put in my last knitting podcast. It looks like I have 18 comments. I know not all of these were entries into the giveaway. So let's see if the winner we pick right now is an entry. No. So that person said, welcome to the knitting world. Thank you. Such a precious story about Karen. Yes, she was a sweet, sweet human. So let's try another one. The um, way to enter was to say what you would knit with the yarn.
All right, here we go. Mel Patton. Hi, hun. Lovely shawl unit. The yarn is lovely. You're doing great with your knitting. Look forward to seeing your sweater. I would love to knit some gloves for the winter. Take care. Have a great week and catch you again soon. All right, Mel. Well, you are the winner. Hopefully you will knit those gloves and show me what they look like. I would love to see. Um, I will be contacting you to get your information and um, get you that yarn out. Okay. Thanks guys.